Well, tomorrow marks the 20th anniversary of the Loma Prieta earthquake. Those of us who were here have strong memories and images of the time. We remember the fallen Cypress Freeway and a collapsed section of the Bay Bridge. Tonight, NewsHour correspondent Spencer Michaels reports on the more than 20-year project to seismically retrofit and redesign the bridge. For years, engineers and politicians have planned and fought over how to fix the earthquake-prone San Francisco Bay Bridge. 280,000 commuters cross the bridge every day, frustrated at how long it's taking to build a new eastern span. When it was constructed in the 1930s, the Bay Bridge was the most expensive structure ever built by man, costing $77 million. And it was an engineering marvel that took just three years to build. It opened in 1936 to national acclaim. A six-lane double-deck bridge, eight miles long, spanning the largest major navigable body of water ever bridged. 53 years later in 1989, the powerful Loma Prieta earthquake centered 60 miles away shook the Bay Area, knocking down houses, starting fires, and dramatically rupturing a part of the Bay Bridge near Oakland, swallowing two cars, killing one motorist, and closing the span to traffic. That came as a shock to officials like Bart Ney, an urban planner and spokesman for the California Department of Transportation, Caltrans. We did believe that these structures were robust and would be able to withstand massive earthquakes, and we were wrong about that. The collapse caused fears that another quake, a bigger one, could have devastating effects unless major changes were made. The Bay Bridge was fully up and running within two months, but a permanent fix can take a little longer. So far, it's been 20 years. During that time, engineers, local and state officials, the press and the public studied the bridge and battled over what to do. When we started this job, we brought uh, forth just a basic concrete viaduct uh, to make this replacement on the east span of the Bay Bridge. Um, we're engineers, A to B sounded good to us, uh, but the community really stepped up and said that they wanted something more at this juncture. San Franciscans are intoxicated with their area's beauty. With the majestic Golden Gate Bridge just a few miles away and the western span of the Bay Bridge, a handsome double-deck suspension structure, local politicians pushed for a brand new eye-catching bridge rather than trying to repair the vulnerable eastern span. Leading the charge was Willie Brown, former legislative leader who was mayor of San Francisco at the time. You certainly don't want what you have on the eastern side of the span, it's horrible to continuously look at. I don't even know how they got away with building that part of the span so unesthetically attractive and building the west side of the span so aesthetically attractive. And then the Steve Heminger, executive director of the Bay Area's Metropolitan Transportation Commission, says the fights were intense. We fought about the design of the bridge. We fought about whether the bridge should have a bicycle or pedestrian path. We fought about where the bridge should go. We fought about whether there ought to be train tracks on the new bridge. The fighting brought delays, which, as prices increased, helped raise the cost of the span by billions, partly paid for, after another fight, by increased tolls. What was originally a limited objective, which was to build a new span that would be seismically strong, grew into a monstrosity where every interest group under the sun tried to glom onto the project and achieve their objective. They all got in the way of getting this project done sooner. 17 years after the earthquake, the state finally opened bids on a costly new design which does not add any increased capacity for the crowded bridge. It does, however, include a soaring tower near the island in the middle of the bay. The new bridge between Oakland and the island will employ a little-used engineering technique to anchor the suspension cables, not into rock or concrete piers, but into the bridge deck itself. That requires construction of expensive temporary bridge decks, which will be torn down in four years, says Mark Ketchum, a structural engineer and Caltrans advisor. One reason it's costing money and taking a long time to build is because we need to build one bridge to carry the temporary weight of the new bridge while it's under construction. 
and then tear down the first bridge. So from a structural engineering perspective, one can argue we're building two bridges to wind up with one. According to Willie Brown, the expense and delay in getting to the new design was inevitable. Politically active Bay Area residents pushed for change, but at the state level, reaching consensus on design and costs was difficult. It's almost impossible at the state level to do what you can do at a city level. At a city level, you actually can say, by this date, we're going to start, and we actually start. At the state level, you've got a state legislative body, you've got the governor, you've got the infrastructure, political types made up of Caltrans and others, and they kind of work at their own pace. No one wants a dictator. No one wants a governor who can say, this is the bridge design, and whether you like it or not, this is what you're going to get. No one wants that. But I don't think anybody in their right mind can argue that 20 years after an earthquake and still being four years away from a new bridge, is a good result either. Now that this project is on its way, even most critics agree that the new bridge will be stronger than the old, which was the original bottom line in design. After a major earthquake, and what we're talking about here is the largest potential earthquake that would happen within 1,500 years, the structure would not only continue to stand, but would serve the public immediately after the quake. That's if a massive earthquake doesn't hit before the new bridge is finished in 2013, barring unforeseen delays. Well, you can visit KQED's Loma Prieta special coverage page of kqed.org slash Loma Prieta to share your memories and your photos. You will also find other KQED stories on the 20th anniversary with links to archived video footage and local newscasts from 1989, as well as links to information on earthquake preparedness.